I never thought I would see this here in the United States. This is not the United States that I came to. And there are millions of other immigrants like me who feel the same way. Many of my friends from countries that have been ripped apart by civil war who came here because the United States stood for the truth it was a beacon of hope, the land of opportunity. They're looking at them, of themselves, they're looking at their families, they're saying to me, what's going on here? How can't people see this? How can't people see this? That was Dr. Fiona Hill, who yesterday, around this almost exact same time, so powerfully framed one of the most maddening aspects of the current political climate, that not only is our country seemingly unable to find true north lately, but some Americans don't even seem interested in looking at the compass. Put more bluntly by our friend Eugene Robinson on The Washington Post, quote, how did we become in such alarming measure so dumb? Why is the news dominated by ridiculous controversies that should not be controversial at all? When did so many of our fellow citizens become full-blown nihilists who deny even the concept of objective reality? And how must this look to the rest of the world? Robinson then goes down the list from the droolingly stupid game of chicken in Congress over the debt ceiling to the needless deaths at this point caused by politically motivated refusal to take the life-saving vaccine for COVID. And here's where the piece comes to land. The final point, quote, how dumb can a nation get and still survive? Idiotically, we seem determined to find out. Joining our conversation is Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist for The Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst. Also joining us, the Reverend Al Sharpton, host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, president of the National Action Network. And Clint Watts is here, a former consultant to the FBI Counterterrorism Division, now a distinguished research fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute and an MSNBC national security analyst. Um, Eugene, I love you for a lot of reasons, but this column is one of my favorites. And it, and it needed to be said. And, you know, th that Fiona Hill... Mm -hmm. sound that I started with. That was her last answer. I said, yeah. what, what are you more concerned about right now as a Russia expert, Russia or America? She said America. That was the beginning of that answer. We're in deep yeah. doo-doo. Yeah, we are. I mean, if, if, if there's no such thing as truth, if we can't agree on, on basic facts, if we can't agree on what happened yesterday or what happened this morning and then we could argue about it what it what it meant but we if, if we can't agree on the basic facts how can we have a democracy if uh you know it lies um disinformation manipulation um all all of this is is killing this country. It really is. It is. It is pulling us apart uh, in a way that is just shocking and um, uh, and and intolerable. And we have to find some way um, to 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 at least get everyone on the same page. So that so then we can we can we can talk about which direction to go in. But I I, I agree with Fiona Hill. You have to be deeply concerned uh, and. And you have to ask, well, why? Why don't people see this? Why don't why don't don't people understand how far down this this road we have we have come, and um, and and see that there's a cliff that we're about to go off, uh, and, um, and 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 then let's do something about it. But um, you know, people are the people booed. Uh, Lindsey Graham when he suggested they might want to get vaccinated against a deadly disease. Right? Is that does that happen in a healthy country, um, or is there something really wrong here? Look, I get asked, um, Rev, about how politics are different now from when I worked in the Bush White House. And one of the, it's an oversimplification, but one of the ways it's different is that the news was the news. And it was a Republican White House. Fox News gave us the most benefit of the doubt. CNN played both sides, and MSNBC, which I call my beloved home now, kicked our butts every single night especially. Um, but they covered the same story. Most days, they led with the same story. The devolution now is that as a deadly pandemic took thousands of Americans from us, and even on our best days of the pandemic, hundreds of Americans were dying. Two of those networks <laughs> covered the pandemic and efforts, um, largely into the last president, failed ones, to protect the citizens. The other one often pretended it wasn't happening. It's not a problem that lays at the feet of both sides. One party, one side is addicted to propaganda. One party, one side is whitewashing and insurrection. One party, one side is making this country less safe. 
Can the other side fix it alone? The question becomes, uh, not only can the other party fix it alone, the question is that can we afford for the other party and other Americans not to fix it? Because I think that this is the first time we've always had our cult leaders and our uh, people on the margins that would come with things to uh, just use people for whatever their motives were, money or whatever. But now we have mainstreamed ignorance. We've mainstreamed lunacy. And it has captured one of the two major parties in the United States. And that's frightening. So I don't think we have an option but to turn this around. You know, I, I said to Gene uh, earlier this morning that he, I'm, I'm preaching at the chapel in Howard University in Washington Sunday, and I'm going to use his column as my text rather than a biblical story. But now I've got a subject to the text. I'm going to quote uh, Sister Nicole saying, we're in deep doo-doo. That's going to be the subject matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <because laughs> Stay that, with that, you, that, Gene. That, I don't think we could say it better. People need to be shocked in the understanding where we are, because it's become so normalized that we don't even understand how we are really in real deep stuff, and that what you're smelling is doo-doo. You're not smelling sweet aroma. This right. is not normal where we are. Right. I mean, look, and I, I do want to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys to stick around for the for the rest of the program because I do want to. I do want to pick your brains about how we get out of it. But I, I, I just. Another beat on, on where we are, Clint, what, what the right seems to have done successfully is to link the disdain for elites and owning the libs and that whole bucket of smears with information, with provable facts, with information about an election result that's audited once, twice, three, four times, with data from scientists whose party affiliation will never know, but they simply ran the data when the COVID vaccine went through for its trials and its approval and whatnot, not just in America, but all over the world. Um, information that saves people's lives about masks for children too young to be vaccinated. Data, the right with tragic consequences successfully linked provable facts with elites. And I wonder how you delink those things. Well, sadly, Nicole, one of the consequences is, in the case of COVID, you just die. This is one of the weirdest strategies ever. Usually you try and impose costs on your adversary. They seem to be imposing costs on their voters when it comes to COVID-19 and the vaccine. Separately, though, what they have been able to do, which has, has really been lost on many people, is it's not just disinformation. It's not just tweets or, or ad campaigns. It is complete rewriting of history rewriting uh, of science, uh, creating an entire false reality. And, and what, uh, you know, Dr. Hill was talking about before she came on, what's super important about it is how did we get here? It's because people want to believe things that are false. It, in no time in human history have you been able, as any citizen can today with social media and the Internet, to access complete nonsense, things that are totally incorrect, that link together and create an entire false reality. What we've come to learn, I think, in the last four years is when you have a president that just pushes lies, disinformation and propaganda all day long is coupled with a, an ecosystem in the online space that repeats those almost to the point where people are in a total bubble. The only thing worse than no information in the end is too much information. There's too much information that is false that's available to people, and they are choosing to believe it. So it's part availability. There's just tons of it. And it's part demand. There is just confirmation bias and implicit bias that people want information that's a lie because that's what they want to believe. The dangerous consequence is, one, individually, it can lead to death and harms. But two, it leads to the death of America.